Whoa, what the heck? Oh, I guess it made the news? When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children have never been seen again. What? Did we get sent a letter? From the origami killer? What is that? Like a key? I have to get out of here and find out what this ticket is about. Hmm. Everyone's crowding around the front of our house already, huh? Instead of comforting me or anything, they treat me like I'm a monster. That's what I feel like anyway. Should I go this way? Where is the exit to this fence? Oh! Not the same thing? Do people not like carrying umbrellas around here? Okay, what's going on? Oh, there's a gap right here. Okay. Do Mr. You Mars, Mars, you Mr. Mars, Mr. Mars, did your Mr. son Mars. disappear? Mr. Mars, can you confirm that your son you has disappeared? Do you think your son is still alive? Seriously? You know what this reminds me of, and probably reminds Ethan of, that day at the mall. Lots of people, everywhere. Okay. Gonna, gonna have to make it through the crowd. I can't, can't take crowds, just can't handle it. Then walk faster. Pick up the pace, buddy! I... I can't make it. Too many people. Too many people. <sighs> calm down, calm down. This is some high-level anxiety! 
He really shouldn't be taking care of his son in the first place if it's this bad. What? The balloon! Gotta get the balloon! The balloon! Gotta get the balloon! Oh shit! Jason! Jason? It's Jason! He's there! He's right there! This time I'll save him! The balloon! Gotta get the balloon! Sorry, I keep clicking that one. <laughs> You gotta be kidding. This is driving me crazy. Wow, that was some of the best voice acting I've ever heard. Ah! Uh... Jason! You made it! No, 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 not that way. Oh my god, the controls are so... It takes like 20 hours for the character to turn to a different direction. My god. Line 18, box number 3. The lockers. Now I've got to find the right one. The locker number. It's on the ticket. Line three, right? I made it. I made it. I managed to get through the goddamn crowd. Line 18, box number three. The lockers. Now I've got to find the right one. 15. 16. How come it doesn't continue? 19. 18. Oh, wait, what the heck? Uh, it's around here. There you go. What town is this set in, by the way? Is it a fictional city or a real life thing? Because subway stations don't usually have luggage lockers unless if it's huge, right? Why are you at a hotel? Just to get some fresh air? 
Away from the press? Whoa! <laughs> Delicate. Touches it? Not even surprised or scared. Are you prepared to show courage to save your son? Joe's garage and parking lot. Well, does the origami killer want to give us trials? Like hardships. Ethan Mars. Help! Dad! Sean! Where are you? I'm so cold! Dad! Dad! How far are you prepared to go to save someone you love? Five origami figures. Each figure is a trial. Each trial provides letters. The letters reveal an address. We have a gun in there. That's not legal, is it? didn't say anything like, hey, if you tell the police, I'm gonna kill your son, so... Can we not go to the police? The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives him an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? The best way of tracking a predator is to be familiar with his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. Continue, Jaden. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. Hmm. And what size is this, uh... Zone. For the moment, about 10 square mile. Oh, great. There must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. 
you gonna question them one by one? The more clues we get, the more we can reduce the zone. We can then cross-check it with our list of suspects and identify the killer. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. God damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, and we gotta get off our asses and find him. Blake! I've had just about enough of what? this shit! You've been chasing this guy for what? Two years? <laughs> and what are you caught, huh? Nothing! Absolutely fucking lootly nothing! What, well, you think you can do a better fucking job than me with your psychology degree and your great glasses? Well, let me tell you something, pal. That don't mean zip when it comes to getting out there. You're just a fucking bureaucrat. That's not what I thought go for him meant. I came here to find a killer. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. With or without your fucking help. Fucking asshole! That's <laughs> enough! <laughs> You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours. I know this is supposed to be really serious, but sometimes I can't help. But <laughs> some of the things are just so far-fetched. No answer. We waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Very different methods of doing things and oh my god. Please don't tell me even the house. Holy crap, this is just ripped from Fahrenheit. <laughs> Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I'd come to Earth to persecute him. <laughs> Real twisted. Professional FBI agent leaving his handprints on everything. Yeah, very religious. The influence from Fahrenheit is so strong, I would actually consider copying. <laughs> But it's from the same creator, so I guess, I guess that makes it okay. No bed frame. No light from the outside. Scriptures on the walls. Oh my god. Hasn't been touched in a long time. Has anyone been living here? All the candles are lit, but... These living conditions, man. Shouldn't we close the door? Cause if he comes back and he finds that the door is open, he's gonna run away. All the signs of a mystical obsessive neurosis compounded by a persecution complex. The guys taking a break from reality hold up here in this crazy apartment. You don't have to be a profiler to see he's not a killer. We're wasting our time here. It's stifling in here. Those windows haven't been opened in years. What are we missing?
I feel like we've seen everything. You didn't notice that? Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Naaman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Where do you work, Nathaniel? Do you have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. Why all the crucifixes? Are you afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I am preparing for the end of the world. Hmm. Nathaniel, do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here? I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Oh, we both know who talks to you. This guy. Don't speak that name. What does he say to you, Nathaniel? Blake, what are you doing? I can't talk about it. You mustn't talk about it. He orders you to go and find new prey, doesn't That's he? That's enough. He Leave needs him more alone. and more. No. No. You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. He told you to go and find that kid Carter, in the park. Shit! The voice Are you was out of your mind? All night long. You Dude. wanted him to stop, didn't you, Nathaniel? Shit! Blake is totally out of his mind. I can't just stand around and do nothing. So you obeyed them to make them stop. You took That's that exactly what you're doing, though. Him. Isn't that right? Maybe Blake knows what no. he's doing after all. Stop! No! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you gonna confess, you bastard? <laughs> What the hell? You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, I shall you to your father in hell. He is the son of Satan. He was sent to earth to destroy shoot, us. For Christ's sake, shoot! Calm down, Nathaniel. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Put the gun down. Now gently put the gun down on the floor. Demon. You shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power. Concentrate on my voice, Nathaniel. Listen only to my voice. Christ, all powerful, defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. I'm here to help you, Nathaniel. To give rid of the voices in your head, but you have oh, to trust me. Don't say that. I don't want to back off, but what does that mean, back off? Back away, slowly. Now drop the gun. Drop it, Nathaniel. I don't want him to shoot himself either. <laughs> Put your hands on your head. Turn around. Motherfucker! In the name of the Lord, I exorcise thee, Satan. Okay, freak, the show's over. You're under arrest. Wow, Blake is... Pretty damn cool under the circumstances. I would have just shot him. A gun isn't the answer to every problem, Blake. Maybe not, but most of the time it helps. <laughs> oh. 
Blake is the reason why people talk about cop abuse these days. So we still don't know why this guy is investigating this. Private vendetta? Personal vendetta? I'm guessing the origami killer. Because he's targeting such a specific population, right? He... Uh, is it an obsession with children? Or was he abused as a child? Mrs. Bowles. Anybody home? Oh, Jesus. Oh my God. <sighs> Wait a minute. She might be around here still. We can still save her. Please, Mrs. no. Bowles? Mrs. Bowles, are you there? Come on, kick it! Oh, shit. No. Mrs. Bowles! Mrs. Bowles, can you hear me? Wake up! Wake up! Uh, should we really be touching her? I mean, like, isn't that gonna... Her injuries... Oh, the bed right here? Hello? I'm gonna call an ambulance. No, I... I don't want to go to the hospital, please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this wound with? Yeah, I think so. Okay, don't move. I'll be right back. Let's see. I need this, and this, and this. I'm here for you, Susan. You'll be all right. I'll take care of you. Is she still going? She better be okay. Stay with me, Susan. Susan, do you hear me? Susan, stay with me. Can you hear me? Stay with me. Okay, come on. That little band-aid. There, I done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Well, luckily the wounds aren't too deep. Hey, how are you feeling? You okay? My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'll figure it out. I'm a private eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is Emily. Gotcha. Ugh. 
Well, that's why we could wash our hands earlier. Ooh, milk. Can we not preemptively get the milk? Hi there, Emily. So, what seems to be the problem, huh? Oh! Going by the smell? I got a pretty good idea. Can we not do this next to the window? Okay. How do you do this again? I don't have that many fingers. There you go, fresh new baby. <laughs> that should feel better. Right, Emily? Hmm? Hey, what's the matter? I thought we solved the problem. Milk? I guess I better warm this thing up. This guy has no idea what he's doing. Oh my goodness. You need to put a drop on your wrist to make sure it's the right temperature. The baby's mouths are sensitive. Next to the used diaper, okay. Oh, Emily, are you hungry? Huh? You hold on. I'll just tilt this bottle a little bit so you don't choke. Okay. Oh, good job, Emily. Hmm? You're feeling good now, right? <laughs> now, I'm gonna rock you very gently so you can have a nice little snooze. Okay, all right. Little baby. Hush. We should probably go back to checking the mom, though. Oh no! Oh, I was supposed to do it slowly! Oh. Sorry, kid. You're not done rocking, right? Hmm. I'm so sorry. Maybe in the same room, so we can wash them both at the same time. Thanks for looking after my baby. I didn't want to leave her. I just couldn't cope anymore. Just not having Jeremy around. He was such a good boy. Another mom. Can't understand why anyone would want to hurt him. Do you take care of this baby on your own? Doesn't Jeremy's father live with you anymore? He disappeared. 
the day after Jeremy. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe... Maybe he couldn't take it. Ever since I've had to look after Emily all on my own and... I couldn't do it anymore. I understand. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? No. He left the house without a word and... There was just the cell phone. A cell phone? Yeah, I, I found a cell phone in his dresser. I'm sure it wasn't his. I'd never seen it before. I tried to turn it on, but it didn't work. Do you still have it? Yeah, it's, um, it's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. I'm sure it's of more use to you than to me. Do you have any family or anybody to help you? Yeah. My mother. I didn't want to ask her for anything. We don't really get along. But I guess I'm out of options. Well, look after yourself. And Emily. I will. I promise. I don't know how much her promise is worth. Man, doesn't she even question why this random guy came to her house? There doesn't seem to be any question about that. That same phone. Good luck, Emily. You take care of your mama. At least put them in the same room. Vintage. 